On May 30, the successful launch of Shenzhou 16 once again created numerous historical achievements. Firstly, it marked the first time that payload specialists were carried, creating history. Secondly, Shenzhou 16 continued the previous achievements of China's space station, maintaining a 100% launch success rate for the space station project, once again making history. Especially in terms of success rate, this is truly a miracle in the history of spaceflight, something that neither the United States nor the Soviet Union could achieve. Starting from the Shenzhou 1 mission in 1999, over a span of 20 years, Shenzhou 16 has completed 16 missions, all of which were resounding successes. In the overall strategy of China's space station, it has also executed 29 launch missions, without a single failure. To maintain such a high success rate in such large-scale launch missions is extremely rare in the history of spaceflight. How did China's space industry accomplish this? The answer lies in its unique space standards system. While researching for this video, I often come across views saying that China's high success rate in spaceflight is due to following in the footsteps of the United States and the Soviet Union and benefiting as a latecomer. Really? Okay, let's figure it out in today's video. In the field of space station projects, accidents are not uncommon, and many excellent astronauts have even sacrificed their lives for them. Taking the example of the Soviet Union, they were the first to send humans into space, but unfortunately, an accident occurred during the lunar landing simulation experiment of Soyuz 1, resulting in the sacrifice of cosmonaut Komarov. A serious accident also occurred during the Soyuz 11 mission, leading to the loss of three astronauts' lives. The United States has a similar history. During the Apollo moon landing program, a fire broke out in the Apollo 1 spacecraft, resulting in the deaths of three astronauts. The International Space Station missions were even more tragic, with major accidents occurring during the Challenger and Columbia Space Shuttle missions, resulting in the loss of 14 astronauts' lives. Among them, the Challenger Space Shuttle accident was the first manned aviation accident in history to be broadcast live worldwide. It occurred in full view of the public, with a massive explosion, and all seven astronauts on board perished, abruptly ending the U.S. Space Shuttle program. If we consider other space accidents as well, you will find that the accident rate of the United States and the Soviet Union in spaceflight history is much higher than that of China. China, on the other hand, is different. Not only has there been no accidents in manned spaceflight projects, but accidents in other space projects have also been relatively rare. Furthermore, with the development of China's space industry, the success rate of its projects has been increasing. In 2022, China conducted 64 rocket launches, including major projects such as the Tianzhou cargo spacecraft Tianzhou-1 and Tianzhou-2, Shenzhou-14 and Shenzhou-15, etc., achieving a terrifying success rate of 96.88%. Among them, the Long March series of rockets launched 53 times, achieving a perfect success rate. So, is China's high success rate in spaceflight due to following in the footsteps of the United States and the Soviet Union and benefiting as a latecomer? If that's what you truly believe, I can only say that you are mistaken. In fact, even a single screw can potentially cause a rocket launch mission to fail. In the history of spaceflight, most accidents are not due to technical issues but rather minor details. For example, the Challenger Space Shuttle accident in the United States occurred because of the failure of a small O-ring seal on the right solid rocket booster, resulting in the explosion of the spacecraft. Furthermore, in recent years, there have been quite a few failed space missions by the United States Starship, Japan, India, the European Union, and others, haven't there? Most of these failures were caused by localized minor issues that led to the overall project's failure. Therefore, it is China's aerospace standards that have astonished the world. In fact, it took China a full 50 years to build this standard system, with the efforts and dedication of several generations. In 1956, China's aviation and aerospace industry began to take off. However, in the beginning, China primarily focused on defense needs. By 1986, China had already embarked on reform and opening up, and the defense industry was no longer solely centered around military products. The China Aerospace and Aviation Corporation decided to introduce civil aircraft projects to develop the domestic market. 
China collaborated with McDonnell Douglas Corporation in the United States to produce a batch of ND-82 aircraft at the Shanghai Aircraft Manufacturing Factory. This was the first time that China had come into contact with the technical standards of advanced aerospace companies from abroad. Therefore, the China Aerospace and Aviation Corporation cherished this opportunity to exchange with McDonnell Douglas and eagerly sought to learn. In July 1990, the China Aerospace and Aviation Corporation held a McDonnell Douglas Quality Management Learning and Experience Exchange Conference in Shanghai, where the concept of zero defects was first proposed. Under this scientific standard requirement, the production efficiency of the Shanghai Aircraft Manufacturing Factory made a leap forward. They assembled a total of 30 MD-82 aircraft, achieving a 100% assembly and flight qualification rate. American experts were amazed. After verification, they marveled at the quality of the MD-82 aircraft assembled in China, and they even gave an example. The wings of the MD-82 have tens of thousands of rivets, and the standard requires each rivet hole to be reamed one by one with a reamer, with an error no larger than one-seventh the thickness of a hair strand. Then, each one is fastened with bolts and sealed with adhesive to ensure that the fuel tanks inside the wings do not leak. During the liquid leakage test of the MD-82 aircraft assembled in China, not a single aircraft had an oil leakage problem. On the other hand, MD-82 aircraft produced on the Long Beach production line in the United States had varying degrees of oil leakage or seepage. Therefore, through the MD-82 project, the world came to realize that the gap between China and other countries lies not in manufacturing technology but in technical standards. As mentioned earlier, technical issues are not the main problem in the aerospace industry, the key lies in the details, and these vulnerabilities often result from management oversights or inadequate response to unexpected situations. As expected, even under the zero defects standard, China's aerospace industry encountered problems. In 1996, the newly developed Long March 3B rocket experienced an accident during the launch of the International Communications Satellite 708. The rocket exploded 22 seconds after liftoff, resulting in the destruction of both the rocket and the satellite. In the same year, during the launch of the China 7 communications satellite by the Long March 3 rocket, the second stage engine malfunctioned, causing the satellite to fail to reach its designated orbit. These two launch failures within a year had a severely detrimental impact on China's aerospace reputation, and both accidents were a result of negligence in the details. Foreign media have been spreading negative reports and smearing China's aerospace industry. Under their influence, some international satellite users have terminated launch contracts, and the international insurance industry has proposed raising insurance rates and imposing harsh conditions on Long March rockets. As a result, China's international commercial launch services have been severely affected. In response to this challenging situation, in 1996, China's aerospace industry explicitly introduced the zero defect standard. Since then, China has established a technical system for aerospace quality management, and no one is allowed to violate these standards, as doing so would result in severe penalties. From 1996 to 1997, hundreds of people were punished for violating quality standards, and finally, under such strict requirements, China's aerospace industry began to take off. In May 1997, the Long March 3A rocket successfully launched the new generation of communications satellite Dongfanghong-3. In June, the Long March 3 rocket successfully launched China's first geostationary meteorological satellite Fengyun-2. In August, the Long March 3B rocket placed the Marex B communication satellite, developed by the United States for the Philippines, into the designated orbit, marking a successful resumption of launches. In the following years, the Long March series of rockets achieved a miraculous feat of 75 consecutive launches without any accidents. In August 2002, China Aerospace Science and Technology Corporation officially included the Zero Defect Dual 5 rules as a management standard. In 2012, the China Aerospace Standardization and Product Assurance Research Institute submitted a proposal to the International Organization for Standardization, hoping to turn China's dual zero quality management standards into an internationally recognized standard. In 2015, the ISO Secretariat decided to skip the final draft international standard stage and proceed directly to publication. In November of the same year, China's dual zero five rules became an official ISO international standard. However, on July 2, 2017, China's newly developed next-generation heavy-lift rocket, the Long March 5, carrying the Shurjian-18 satellite, suffered an engine failure and deviated from its trajectory, ultimately ending in a failed launch into the Pacific Ocean, with no debris found. 
China was left uncertain about the cause of the failure. Soon, the internet was filled with criticisms of China's aerospace industry. Some Chinese netizens commented that China's aerospace industry had become too complacent due to its previous successes, while foreign media mocked the doomed fate of the Long March 5th rocket project. In response, China launched the largest ever zero defect campaign in the history of its aerospace industry. Despite the absence of debris, China meticulously analyzed the entire rocket development process, creating a fault tree diagram and systematically eliminating potential issues through the fault tree analysis method. The entire engineering process was thoroughly scrutinized, and over 50 hidden risks that could cause a decrease in thrust were identified and addressed. Each of these risks was subsequently eliminated through the zero defect approach, one by one. Unexpectedly, during the investigation, one problem after another surfaced, requiring repeated zeroing and re examination. Even though the rocket had been confirmed ready for launch twice, it was still subjected to further scrutiny following the zero defect requirement. In the most critical moments, an additional position of chief commander was established for the long March 5th zero defect work. In the history of China's aerospace industry, this position is only created for significant projects or missions facing immense challenges. Ultimately, the entire zero defect process lasted for over 900 days, involving the deployment of hundreds of thousands of personnel and conducting more than 15,000 critical technical tests. It was a tremendous endeavor that successfully achieved zero defects. In 2019, the mighty return of the Long March 5th witnessed tears streaming down the faces of many Chinese people. The Long March 5th is not just a rocket, it represents a monumental test for China's aerospace industry. However, it was through this rebirth that China's aerospace standards underwent further evolution, leading to a major breakthrough in the country's space exploration. In June 2020, the successful launch of the 55th Beidou Navigation Satellite marked the completion of the network, breaking the decades-long monopoly of the US GPS system. In July 2020, the Tianwen-1 mission achieved a remarkable milestone by successfully orbiting, landing, and exploring Mars in a single mission, creating a historic moment in the field of space exploration. In November 2022, the Chang'e 5 lunar mission triumphantly landed on the moon and retrieved lunar soil, prompting the head of NASA, with a thick skin request, to seek its presentation as a gift. In April 2021, the Tianhe core module of China's space station was successfully launched, making China the only country in the world to possess its own space station. The miracles of China continue to unfold. Well, thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions, just leave them in the comments section. We'll come back as soon as possible and check them, and then we'll give feedback. See you next time.